Hey there, Nick with CC Minis, and today we're gonna build this. A big ol' orc stomp. All right, let's do this. Here's what we have to work with. Some weird steampunk giraffe kids toy. A cute little toy toolbox. Some chains, gears, beads, and bits. And these little blocks from a Star Wars themed Angry Birds toy. This thing is just too fun. Here, let me show you how it works. It's really, really cool. Oh, sorry, R2. Let's start with the major shapes. Build this up and then add in the smaller details and greeblies once we have the body nailed down. This draft toy had a perfectly sized chassis, which matches up closely in size to the official Warhammer 40k model. After a quick chop and the addition of a gear with a, um, male appendage, we can start building the torso. Ignore this particular piece, it gets scrapped here in a few minutes, but focus on the gears I'm gluing to it. With these and their male counterparts, I'll be able to rotate the torso and arms to help this big boy aim. And with orc shooting, he's gonna need all the help he can get. I got the perfect bit for the head. I used the other wheel from that possessed kid's toy I tore apart last year to make my chicken tank. A small, random plastic tube thing was lavishly glued to the head to give the stompa a nice neck. Ah, here we go. Here are those gears with pegs. We can use these as a base to build the arms off of. And that way we're going to be able to twist and pose the arms however we like. You know, as much as I love a curvy bottom, the silhouette of this draft butt just isn't doing it for me. So let's grab some safety goggles and a rotary tool, and chop up some of the toolbox shell, and use that as the main shape instead. Yeah, that's a lot better. A much tankier posterior. One thing I love about orc vehicles is a big old death roller. There's something just so serene and peaceful about a spiky spinning cylinder of death. Let's make one of those real quick out of some applesauce pouch lids. So let's twist a good dozen or so of these, punch holes in the center, and glue them together using a shish kebab skewer as a support rod. This is looking a bit too uniform for orc construction though, so let's quickly cut them down a bit. Ah, there we go. Now that we got the death roller, we should make something to attach this to the stampa. A few of those sweet angry bird blocks and some circular square pieces from the giraffe toy ought to do it. After briefly testing the contraption to make sure it fits, I bulked it out with a bit more toy parts. Then I built the stampa front end out of a few more parts from that ATAT -AT kit. I really like this one. It feels like a mean looking semi-truck grill. Now this is looking pretty good for show, but we need to add something to make it go. This tractor engine looks perfect, don't you know? So let's build it up nice and slow. No, oh, just kidding. That, that went pretty fast. Job's done. I love how big this engine is, even for the size of a Snapa, and I want to show it off. So let's build a nice janky platform for it to sit on. The tractor kit came with a nice bunch of 1 24th scale bits to play with. Like these little angled things that can be used as supports. Plenty of tubes and piston parts that were used as exhaust pipes and this nice textured panel that fits perfectly right about here. Alright, like I mentioned earlier, this current torso just isn't jiminying my crickets. So, it's gotta go. Let's build another one. The large platform from the ATAT -AT toy has some nice torso angles. I used some more blocks to bulk out the torso. and rip the gears off of the old one before gluing them onto the new. This large bit from the tractor works well to give the Stampa that iconic Quasimodo orc hunchback. Nice. And this random engine doohickey will work as a nice neck hole. For the torso top, we can use those angry ATATI panels after giving them the Van Gogh treatment. While the puddles of superglue on the torso dry, let's start working on those arms. 
The right arm is going to be made primarily from tractor bits. I started with a couple of nice circular pieces. Then I glued them onto some nice long boys to make the basis of a giant chainsword. God, I love Warhammer. What a fantastically ridiculous weapon. I trimmed away some of the casing to make room for the chain later on. And added in a block to bulk out the sword body. To make the forearm piece, I cobbled some random bits together around a gear sandwich. What's your favorite kind of sandwich? Let me know in the comments below. Mine's a Cubano. Then I started to make the shoulder and bicep area with a knob gear as a base. This spray gun nozzle part will work great here, but required about an ounce and a half of super glue to make it stick. Using this much super glue and baking soda was probably a bad idea. You can't really see it on camera, but it definitely was starting to smoke a bit and was painfully hot to the touch. Don't, don't try this at home. Once that stopped smoking, I added on another engine part that kind of looked like an elbow as an elbow part that kind of looked like an engine. Somehow the spray bottle spinny thing didn't get glued into place, which I think is pretty neat and will allow me to pose the arm later on. To connect the elbow to the gear elbow, I used some more long bits from the tractor to make a bicep. Don't think about this too hard. Orc anatomy is an enigma. I then used one of the ATAT -AT feet to make a sweet pauldron. All right, it's time to make that chain sword chain thing. The tractor model came with these sweet interlocking pieces for its treads, which I cut in half to closer match the width of the chain sword. Gluing the chain down was a bit finicky, but with enough super glue and a spunky attitude, anything is possible. Let's get started with arm number two. This began with making a similar style ATAT -AT foot pauldron style spray bottle lid combo. This time with just a little less super glue. I really, really dig a nice orc gatling gun style weapon. So let's build one of those. I started by gluing a holy parmesan lid to a gear thing, which turned out to be just the right size. While that dried, I made the spinny gear part of the gatling gun by putting a bunch of gear toys on this random part which I have absolutely no memory of. Then I squished it all together with a big fat screw. This little peg is gonna get in the way, so it's gotta go. Then I can make a nice glue sandwich with the barrel and nozzle of the gun. To give a bit more dimension to the nozzle, I added a bunch of these little cylinder things from the tractor kit before giving them a hot glue shower to lock them in place. At this point, the gun looked a bit forward heavy, so I started to build a ballast out of this funny looking funnel piece of junk and a cap to my hipster deodorant. I swear, we'll make a deodorant stick build someday. What should we build? Spaceship? Big rusty tube? Let me know in the comments below. Oh yeah, I'm loving the way this looks. Let's see how it looks on the Snapa. Ooh. That may just be enough DACA. <laughs> no, but don't you worry, we'll, we'll add some more here in a bit. First though, let's start on the face and bulk out the head. To do so, I'm gonna use some EVA foam, which is kind of like construction paper, except it's foam. To start, I marked down the overall size of the head. Then, using that for scale and some references of other orc stampas, I drew out an orky mean mug. I marked out where the nose and eye holes will be cut out later on, and drew a circle where I can give this fine chap a monocle later. I also added in some inquisitive eyebrows, which will help humanize this orky monstrosity. 
Last thing to draw was the prominent orc jawline, flushed with several spiky teeth. Those have got to be a major pain to brush every night. An X-Acto knife was used to cut out the major shapes. Quick, gotta make sure he looks grumpy enough. Then I used the X-Acto again to remove the nose and eye orifices, and then made two small rectangles to be thrown on as eyebrows. I laid down an elegant glue pattern and then quickly smushed his face on to adhere it to the head. The jaw went on next, quickly followed by an eye and jaw fixtures. Then a few random little greeblies to add in some visual interest, including a nice little antenna. After completing the head, I thought it'd be a good time to give the stampa a bit more daka. A soap pump was cut up for the main shape. Oops, it looks like it wasn't quite empty. Then it was glued down to a spare gear, making an impromptu Beyblade. Last piece was a green pipe toy I stole from my kiddo. He won't notice, he has millions of these. At least for now. The same pipe toys were used to make an exhaust on the top of the torso, and some more exhaust pipes on the bottom near the engine. Let's get those foam sheets back out and make some panels. I used the imaginary electric technique to break this sheet apart, but I'd recommend just using scissors at home. This smelled a bit funny afterwards. Using super glue, I started to apply panels of various sizes all over the stampa, filling in the large holes on either side of the torso and random places here and there. Orcs are known for their ramshackled vehicles, so this step really helps cement this as an orky construct while overall tying the piece together. After the panels were snugly fixed, I took a razor blade and weathered them a bit, cutting at the edges of the pieces and slicing here and there to simulate scrapes, gunshots, and other bits of battle damage. I took some to town with this weathering, while others I just barely hit. I want it to look like these panels have been added in at various times, like the stampa was repaired after multiple deadly battles. Now that the panels are all done, we need to add in some mechanics to keep them all together. That's right, it's riveting time. I've spent a long time searching for the perfect rivets. In my quest, I found several solutions that failed in one way or another. Cutting styrene rods looks wonky and is inconsistent. Nail gems are wonderful, but slick and relatively expensive. It was recently in my travels I happened upon a Joanne Fabrics, and my wife found the holy grail of rivets. Little did she know, they would be my undoing. Diamond Dots! These little half-sphere gems are amazing for rivets. I've used them on a few projects so far, and they have yet to disappoint. Each bottle costs just a few dollars and contains so, so, so many dots. So, how do we use them? Well, you're gonna to wanna to get one of these things. A little pen style applicator. And you're gonna need some wax. No, not that kind of wax. No, 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 not that kind either. You're gonna want some beeswax. Luckily, my mother-in-law is a beekeeper and was nice enough to give me this bar. Thanks, Janine. But you can also get some on Amazon or in a fancy store like Whole Foods or Mariano's. Just ask someone where the B section is. What you want to do is scoop a little wax on the end of the pen and smush it into a soft cone-like shape. Then pour some dots into their container's cap. Then gently press down with the wax which will cling to a dot. After that, dip it in a bit of super glue and affix it to the model. See? Easy. Foolishly, in late 2021 I made a video where I promised to add one rivet for every like, comment, and subscribe I got on a video. So I kept track of the number of rivets with a goal of hitting at least 641. This process took several days to complete. The first few nights went as you may expect. I thought I was doing well. Progress was apparent and I got into a rhythm. Rivet. Mark. Repeat. Rivet. Mark. Repeat. But rivet, you need to remind yourself that overconfidence rivet, mark, is a slow and insidious rivet, killer. Mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat, rivet, mark, repeat, rivet, mark, repeat. After the third day, the process started to infiltrate my dreams. Rivet, mark, repeat, 
Rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat. Strange Rivet, hallucinations mark, repeat. of dots Rivet, brought on by mark, super glue fumes Rivet, and caffeine mark, became repeat. commonplace. Rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat. After a while, I became the rivets, and the rivets became me. Rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat. I tried to scream, but my mouth was riveted shut. Repeat, rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet, mark, repeat. Rivet. Finally, on the seventh night, the last rivet was placed. I counted the tallies from the week prior, confused, tired, and unsure of what was real anymore. I came to a total of 1,973 rivets, and a familiar feeling came over me. I longed for more and slipped briefly back into madness. I found 27 more spots for rivets and filled them, coming to the nice round number of 2,000 rivets. More than I wanted, more than I needed, but just enough to make a cool thumbnail. After that, I rested. I woke energized and ready to put the finishing touches on this beast of a build. I brought out my big tub of bits and started to greebly. This is the process of adding detailed bits to the model. I used a lot of random pieces and parts from other model kits to build up some visual interest. Speaking of building something up, I need to thank my patrons. Thank you all so much for the support. Your generosity is helping me build this channel, and I really couldn't do it without you. If you want to help support the channel, there is a link to my Patreon down in the description below. Or if that just isn't for you, well, the like button is down there too, and that one's free. Other materials used are some wires pulled from the innards of kids' toys, beads, and these small gears. One tip if you greebly at home is to concentrate on certain areas, leaving plenty of open, unaltered spaces. This will trick your mind into looking at the detailed parts and inferring detail on the rest. Of course, having a couple thousand rivets on the models helps a lot too. After greebling, it was time for the goop. The goop phase is one of my favorites. You basically just take out a bunch of textured paints and mediums and slather them all over the model. Some goops crackle, some goops crust, some goops dry like a big hunk of rust. It all looks pretty strange now, but once we start painting we will really be able to accentuate all these nice textures we are laying down. And this is where we must end this one, dear viewer. We will paint this puppy up someday in the future. Hit the like button if you liked the video, and subscribe and hit the little bell if you want to know when the next one comes out. And as always, stay healthy and take care. Bye.